Welcome. My name is Peter Strong and I provide online therapy for treating depression and also anxiety and addiction and many other uh, common psychological and emotional problems that benefit from uh, the techniques of mindfulness therapy, which is what I specialize in and have been working on for the last 10 years or so um, and find to be extremely effective for uh, working with anxiety and depression. So if you're interested in online therapy for depression, um, then please reach out to me by email and ask any questions you have about the mindfulness therapy approach for recovering from depression. So online therapy is a very good option for many people um, because it's very convenient. Uh, it's, it, it offers less barrier to seeking help for your uh, depression or anxiety. And that's really important. Um, depression can be extremely debilitating um, and very painful. It's a very painful form of emotional suffering. But you do not have to remain um, a victim of depression. You can change. Depression, uh, like any other um, emotional um, problem, is fundamentally habitual in nature. Depression is a habit, um, as is anxiety and many other emotional problems. They're basically habits, and habits can be changed. The fundamental problem for most people is that they become addicted to these uh, blind emotional reactive habits that cause their suffering. There's no conscious relationship to uh, their emotions, to the mind in general. We just become slaves to the habit that creates depression. So this is where mindfulness therapy comes in and it's why it's so powerful because mindfulness therapy is a way of cultivating conscious awareness of your uh, emotional suffering. It's a way of changing the relationship you have to the mind. That means to your emotions and to your thoughts and beliefs so that you do not become blindly identified with them. Uh, so this is extremely important uh, to overcome any habit. When you can develop uh, a conscious relationship with that habit, then you bring the element of choice in. It becomes possible to start changing the uh, thought patterns and the uh, emotional pain underneath that is feeding the depression. But without that conscious awareness, without that mindfulness, um, change is practically impossible. And the habits simply continue to operate uh, automatically. So the primary focus in mindfulness therapy is to develop this very conscious but non-reactive relationship with your emotions and thoughts. We learn to uh, see the thoughts and the emotions very uh, directly uh, and but without becoming identified with them. So as you know rumination is one of the key uh, factors that uh, feeds depression. Uh, rumination does not cause depression but depression uh, leads to rumination. Uh, to obsession with uh, thoughts that simply propagate themselves endlessly. And ruminating thoughts have the effect of reinforcing the emotion underneath. That's the important distinction to make here. So rumination does not cause depression, but it does feed the depression. Uh, very much in the same way that putting wood on a bonfire 
uh, feeds the fire and it prevents the fire from doing what the fire really wants to do, which is to burn itself out. That's its direction, uh, its natural direction of change. It's very much the same with depression. The natural direction is for healing. The depression is trying to heal itself like any other um, construct in the mind or in the body, it always tries to heal and return to a state of balance and equilibrium. But the reactivity, the rumination, uh, prevents that natural healing process from um, taking place. It simply uh, inhibits healing. Now, so how do we go about changing these patterns of reactive thinking? How do we break free from rumination? Well, the most important thing to understand here is that you must not try to avoid those uh, intrusive thoughts um, and uh, the emotions underneath the thoughts. Uh, trying to distract yourself, trying to do positive thinking is going to be completely uh, useless for healing depression. Um, any form of avoidance simply uh, takes consciousness away from the habit and that will reinforce the habit even more. So we have to bring those thoughts into consciousness and develop a different relationship with them in which we are not identified with those ruminating thoughts. We learn to see the thoughts as objects in the mind, instead of becoming lost in those thoughts. So this is developing the quality uh, of mindfulness we call objective consciousness, the ability to be the observer that sees the mind. That is the crucial step towards healing. Because when you stop identifying with the thoughts, then you inactivate those thoughts, you neutralize them, and they are no longer able to feed the depression. So the way we deactivate and neutralize reactive thoughts is by deliberately bringing them into the mind so that we can work on changing our relationship to them from one of blind reactive identification to one of being the observer that does not react and does not identify with those thoughts. So this is one of the central themes in the mindfulness therapy approach that I have developed uh, over the years and that I find to be so effective. The basic training that I will teach you during our sessions together is how to meditate on your depression. Most people think that meditation is a way of escaping depression or anxiety or suffering. Uh, far from that. The purpose of meditation is to bring conscious awareness or mindfulness to uh, those parts of the mind that are trying to heal. It's a response of compassion. And this is essential for healing. So we do that in a very deliberate way. We meditate on those ruminating thoughts, but we learn to change our relationship to them so that they no longer affect us and, and feed the depression. Thoughts in themselves are not the problem. And this is another very important theme to understand. Thoughts are not the problem. Ruminating thoughts are not the problem. The problem is the blind reactive identification with those thoughts in which we lose our perspective as the observer, which is our true self. So um, when you learn how to do this, you'll, you'll start to uh, take away the fuel source from, from the depression and this can produce dramatic changes. 
So during our sessions, I will teach you exactly how to do this. We will practice learning how to meditate on our depression. I will guide you in this meditation uh, and you'll start to experience the changes yourself during the sessions. And then, of course, you can practice meditating on your depression between sessions, and that's very important. When you turn this into a regular daily practice, um, that training will, will greatly increase the rate of healing. Uh, most people see quite incredible results when they start applying mindfulness therapy uh, to heal their depression. And you should expect to see significant and noticeable changes within the first three to four uh, weeks of practice. Um, often people can completely break the habit of depression altogether. Um, I will guide you in this in, in detail and um, help you. That's my job, to help you learn how to apply mindfulness uh, to work with your emotions more effectively. So if you would like to learn how to uh, work with mindfulness using, uh, work with depression using mindfulness therapy, uh, then do please contact me and let's schedule a uh, Skype therapy session. I do all my sessions via Skype. Uh, it's just as good as meeting in person uh, for the vast majority of people. It's more convenient, less intimidating, um, and uh, generally it's, there's no difference at all. Uh, so if you'd like to uh, schedule a Skype therapy session for your depression, then do please contact me. Thank you.